It's important when climbing on and off machinery to use the steps and handholds provided. Operators are more frequently injured from falls off equipment than any other cause. Always face the machine and maintain a three-point contact, two feet in a hand or two hands in a foot. The cab features an access door on the left side that can be held open by a hydraulic strut. It is recommended to run with the door closed to keep out the elements. The door has a sliding window. The right side also features a sliding window. Both windows can be opened for cross ventilation if desired. A trainer seat is provided and should only be occupied for this purpose. It is not intended for riders or passengers on the job site. The operator seat is fully adjustable to provide comfort through a long workday. The armrest angle can be adjusted with a knob under the armrest. Forward and aft positions are set with this lever. The air ride seat height is adjusted with a button on the front of the seat. Push in to raise the seat, pull out to lower the seat. Air ride firmness is adjusted with the knob on the side of the seat. Also on the left side of the seat is the four back cushion lock. In the up position, the cushion is free to move fore and aft for added comfort in rough terrain. Pushing down the lever locks the cushion in place. Also on the left side is the control for the seat back angle. The lumbar support control is on the seat back. A cab tilt jack handle is mounted on the floor of the cab on the left side of the seat. Remember, always buckle up before you start up. A seat belt comfortably and securely holds you in the seat. In case of an overturn, that's where you want to stay. Be sure the seat belt is in proper working order and replace it every three years, regardless of its appearance. Before operating the truck, familiarize yourself with the controls and instruments and other features in the cab. Lifting this cover on the left, you have access to the fuse panel compartment. Investigate all occurrences of a blown fuse or relay. A listing of the fuses is shown under the lid. On the left side of the dash, you have a 12 volt DC accessory socket. Below it is a diagnostic connection port. Also in front is the radio CD player. The steering column is fully adjustable by positioning the tilting and telescoping levers. The steering column lever operates the turn signals the headlight beam intensity and the horn. Mounted on the floor are the accelerator and brake pedals. The floor switch on the left is the differential lock. This locks all the differentials for improved traction in loose traction conditions. Refer to the operator's manual for details of its use. On the center dash console is the monitor display unit. You will find gauges, system indicator lights, and a message display screen with four touch buttons. The upper middle gauge is the speedometer. To the right is the engine RPM. Below is the fuel gauge. On the left are the engine coolant temperature and the transmission oil temperature gauges. The ignition is found on the top left of the sealed switch module, sometimes referred to as the SSM or switch pad. By pressing it once, ignition power will be turned on and the gauges will function as well as bulb check. Let's freeze the screen momentarily. Refer to the operator's manual for detailed information on the function of each indicator. The caution indicator is an important symbol to watch. If it illuminates, or illuminates with an audible alarm, it indicates a situation has developed in a system whose icon is also illuminated. Depending upon the system and the alarm, the machine may need to be shut down immediately. Refer to the operator's manual for exact details. With the ignition power off, and by pressing select, the message center will display the fuel level, hours, and battery voltage. To look at more features of the monitor, 
the ignition must be activated. Following the bulb check, the monitor will display two machine functions as well as the transmission direction. Pressing the Next button will change the display on the right side. Pressing the Back button will change the left side. The display options include Hour Meter, Odometer, Trip, Miles Per Hour, Engine RPM, Dump Body Tip Cycles, Payload if equipped with onboard weighing, and Fuel Consumption. Refer to the Operator's Manual for details of each display. Let's take a better look at the Sealed Switch Module, or SSM, that provides controls for many machine functions. Notice that the top edge, right side, and handle below the module can be used as a handhold while traveling. A decal outlining the functions of each of the SSM buttons is located on the front window. On the upper left corner of the SSM are the engine start and stop switches. As mentioned, pressing the ignition on engine start switch one time turns ignition power on. Pressing and holding the button a second time allows the engine to crank and start. Pressing the engine stop ignition power off button once will initiate the engine shutdown sequence. The machine will automatically calculate how long to idle the engine before shutting down to allow the engine and turbocharger to cool down. In the event that the engine must be immediately stopped, the operator can press and hold the engine stop button to shut down the engine if the unit is moving at less than 3 miles per hour. Overriding the turbocharger cooldown timer is not recommended unless absolutely necessary. Located next to the engine stop ignition off switch is the hazard light switch. Pressing the hazard light switch will turn on the four-way flashers. Pressing the park brake switch illuminates the light and sets the park brake. The park brake is engaged when the light is illuminated. The park brake is released when there is no light. To the right are the transmission direction controls. With the operator's foot on the service brake, select F for forward, N for neutral, and select R for reverse. Release the park brake while applying the service brakes, then engage forward or reverse. If forward is pressed, the transmission will shift into forward gear. Anytime reverse is selected, the reverse lights will illuminate and the backup alarm will sound. The reverse monitor, if equipped, is always on, regardless of transmission direction. Press neutral, then press the park brake switch to apply the park brake. Below the park brake button are two buttons to set the upper gear range limit. Push the plus gear button to increase the top gear. This can be seen in the monitor display window and the minus gear to lower it. The transmission will not shift above the set gear. The number on the far right is the highest gear available. The highlighted number is the current transmission gear. If a lower gear is selected than the actual current gear, the transmission will not downshift until vehicle speed is reduced and it is safe to do so without causing damage to the powertrain. Once a lower gear is attained, the truck will never shift above the maximum selected gear. Below the gear limit buttons is the gear hold switch. The function of the gear hold switch is to prevent gear hunting or shift cycling under certain haul conditions. As you go up a grade, the transmission will usually shift down. When it does, engage the gear hold switch. This stops upshifting to the next gear. The transmission will still shift down as required, but will not shift back up to the next highest gear. The gear hold switch can be disengaged any time as conditions permit, allowing the transmission to shift back up to the highest gear selected. The left button on the second row engages and disengages operator speed limits. Two speed limits can be set. With the left LED illuminated, speed limit 1 is engaged. A pop-up will appear, displaying the last set speed limit for limit 1. Speed limit 2 is engaged with the right LED lit. A pop-up will appear, displaying the last set speed limit for limit 2. The limits can be changed by first engaging either limit 1 or limit 2, then using the plus or minus buttons below to change the setting.
a pop-up will appear displaying the speed limit setting. These operator-controlled speed limits are useful when negotiating very rough terrain or a specific job site obstacle. The truck will not exceed the selected speed while the speed limit is activated. The next switch on the second row is the descent control switch used to maintain a set speed between 6 and 30 miles per hour during downhill operation. Here's how it works. Push and release descent switch. Accelerate to desired speed for downhill operation. When the desired speed is reached, release the accelerator pedal to activate descent control. The system will control engine speed and use the retarder to maintain the initial set speed. To slow the descent speed, apply the service brake pedal as needed and release when the new desired speed is reached. The machine will automatically set and hold the new desired speed. Descent control will disengage if the speed drops to 3 miles per hour below the set point. Accelerator pedal is pushed or pushing the switch to turn off the LED. Another way to slow descent speed on a hill is using the transmission retarder without the descent speed control. If the truck is moving and the operator removes their foot from the accelerator, the transmission retarder will slow the truck based on a set percentage. These two buttons on the touchpad are used to set the amount of retardation. Push the plus or minus switches accordingly to increase or decrease amount of transmission retardation between 10 and 100%. When the buttons are pushed, the percent of retardation is displayed in the monitor for three seconds. When the brake pedal is depressed, the transmission retarder is automatically applied at 100% for all models to extend the service brake life. The retarder indicator light on the monitor will illuminate whenever the transmission retarder is engaged. The two lower left buttons on the touchpad are used to engage and disengage the differential locks. Pressing the left button with the LED lit engages the interaxle lock or IDL. It locks the front axle drive shaft in a one to one ratio with the rear axle's drive shaft. The interaxle lock can be engaged on the go at vehicle speeds of 12 miles per hour or less. When the IDL engages, the IDL indicator on the monitor will come up. Avoid using the diff locks on hard or compacted surfaces. Due to driveline windup, Increased tire and driveline wear will occur. Press the IDL button to disengage the lock. It will also disengage if the vehicle speed exceeds 12 miles per hour. The button to the right engages automatic differential lock, or ADL. ADL is intended to limit wheel slip and improve traction without operator input. This ADL measures ground speed and direction to limit wheel slip by controlling the cross axle and inter axle diff locks. Two switches on the lower right control dump body movement. Pressing and holding the dump body raise button will raise the body. To stop, simply release the switch. The dump body lower switch can also be pressed and then released to control the dump body lowering. Note that if the dump body is raised less than 5%, it will float back down. The dump body needs to be raised higher than 5% for it to stay in a raised position. The dump body raise and lower switches work in conjunction with the auto dump body setting switch located in the middle of the second row of the touchpad. With no light illuminated, dump raise is in soft stop. When the dump body reaches maximum dump height in this mode, the body will slow down and have a soft stop at the end of its travel. This is more comfortable for the operator and works well for dry and loose material. With the right light illuminated, the dump body will have a hard abrupt stop at the top raised position. This helps shake sticky material out of the dump body. With the left light lit, the truck will be in driveline assist with soft stops mode. 
Driveline Assist helps eliminate repetitive dumping actions like applying the park brake, increasing engine speed, and raising the dump body. Let's take a look at how Driveline Assist works. When the operator backs up to dump, they simply press the dump body raise control once. The truck automatically applies the park brake, shifts the transmission to neutral, and increases engine RPM to fast idle. Once the dump body has raised, the operator simply applies the service brake pedal, selects forward, and begins to drive away from the pile. As the operator clears the pile, single tap on the dump body lower button, and the dump body lowers. When dump is activated, the dumping screen displays the percentage that the dump body is raised. When the system detects that the dump body is being raised, the monitor will automatically change from the default display screen to the dumping screen. With both LEDs lit, the truck is in driveline assist with hard stops mode. The operation is the same, but with a hard dump body stop at full dump. Note that the transmission gear available is dependent upon dump body position. See Operator's Manual for details. When using driveline assist, as we saw, one tap on the raise button will fully raise the dump body. To stop the dump body from raising, simply press the raise switch again. To lower the dump body at any time, press and release the dump body lower switch. To stop the dump body while it is lowering, press the lower switch again. Before continuing with the switches on the touchpad, let's look at other operational features of the E-Series ADTs. One of these features is onboard weighing. You will find a load indicator light bar above the left mirror. This light bar is an indicator for the loading tool operator. The operator in the truck can use the monitor's payload screen to monitor current payload weight. When the truck is first started, or the dump body has just been dumped and then lowered, all three load lights will flash for 30 seconds, indicating that the system is calculating carryback or zeroing itself. Once the system finishes calculating carryback, the yellow underloaded light will flash continuously, indicating that the truck is ready to be loaded. As the truck is being loaded and approaching capacity, the yellow underloaded light will turn on and stay illuminated. This will happen when the truck's capacity is between 75 to 90 percent. Usually this occurs rather quickly, depending on the bucket size being used to load the truck. When the truck's payload reaches 90%, the yellow light will turn off, and the green, fully loaded light will illuminate. The green light will remain on up to 110% capacity. When the truck's payload reaches 110% of capacity, the green, fully loaded light will turn off, and the red, overloaded light will illuminate. This light will remain on as long as the truck remains overloaded. For more complete information regarding the use of the onboard weighing system, refer to the machine's operator's manual. Now let's take a look at a few of these features that must be activated by a service technician. If auto shutdown is activated, the owner must select a shutoff time. The shutoff time can be selected between 2 and 60 minutes. In this example, if left idling, the engine will shut down after two minutes. Notice that with 30 seconds remaining in the countdown, the monitor display changes to notify the operator that the machine will be shut down. There will also be an audible beep warning with 10 seconds left. If auto horn is activated, anytime the engine is going to be started, the truck will honk twice, providing awareness to bystanders that the machine is about to start. Anytime the operator selects forward, the horn will sound once. If the operator selects reverse, the horn will sound twice. 
Another feature available on all E-Series trucks is the ability to limit the maximum dump height of the dump body. A good example of when to use this feature is if the truck is dumping under a hopper or inside of a low ceiling building. Here we have selected 85% of 100% total dump body height. A tire pressure monitoring system is standard equipment on E-Series ADTs. This system is both temperature and pressure compensated. A group of four switches controls the front and rear wipers. Pressing and holding the button will spray washer fluid on the front windshield as long as the button is pushed. The wiper will continue through one full cycle and stop. To the right is the front windshield wiper switch. With the left LED lit, the wiper is in intermittent mode. With the middle LED lit, the wiper is in slow speed mode. With the right LED lit, the wiper is in high speed mode. One more push will turn the wipers off with no LEDs illuminated. The rear windshield washer operates the same as the front. Push and hold to spray washer fluid. The rear wiper operates the same as the front in that with the left LED lit, the wiper is in intermittent mode. With the middle LED lit, the wiper is in slow speed mode. With the right LED lit, the wiper is in high speed mode. One more push will turn the wipers off with no LEDs illuminated. Below the 25-button sealed switch module is the remote for adjusting the left and right outside mirrors. The top switch selects which mirror to be adjusted. The joystick type control below is used to control movement. The selection switch should be returned to the center position to avoid accidental movement of the mirrors. To the right is a 12-volt receptacle lighter. To the right of the larger 25-button touchpad is a smaller 15-button sealed switch touchpad. The top left button controls the headlights. With the LED on, the headlights are on. As previously seen, the left lever on the steering column controls the bright and dim. The headlights are off with the LED off. The next switch turns on and off a beacon if equipped. The right switch turns on and off the heated mirrors if equipped. Below the headlight switch is the front work light on-off switch. To the right is the articulation backup light switch if equipped. It has four modes. One push will illuminate the left LED. In this mode, the articulation backup light will come on and stay on. Pushing the button again will illuminate the middle LED. In this mode, the light will only come on if reverse is selected. Pushing the button a third time will illuminate the right LED. In this mode, the light will come on only when the dump body is raised or being raised. Pushing the button a fourth time will illuminate the middle and right LEDs. In this mode, the light will come on only when reverse is selected and the dump body is raised or being raised. Another push with no LEDs lit will deactivate the light. To the right is the stairwell light switch. With the LED lit, the stairwell light located on the left side of the cab will light. If the ignition power is removed when the stairwell light is on, the light will remain on for a preset amount of time. To turn off the stairwell light with the ignition on, push the switch again. The bottom three rows of the touchpad control operator comfort in the cab. The defrost mid-vent control switch has three modes. With the left LED lit, Air is directed toward the windshield for defrosting and defogging. With the right LED lit, air is directed to the mid-level vents. With both LEDs illuminated, air is directed through both defrost and mid-level vents. To deactivate flow to these vents, push the switch until no LEDs are lit. 
To the right is the cab air recirculation switch. With the LED off, outside fresh air is used. With the LED lit, air in the cab is recirculated. Another push will turn it off. The snowflake button controls the air conditioner on-off. The air conditioner is on with the LED lit. The left button on the fourth row turns the lower vents on or off. With the LED on, air is directed to the floor vents. The floor vents are off with no LED illuminated. These two switches control cab air temperature. Press the plus switch to increase the temperature. Press the minus switch to lower it. Next to the temperature control switches are the blower speed switches. Press on the plus switch to increase blower speed. Press the minus switch to lower it. The lower left switch activates and deactivates the heated seat if equipped. The heat is on with the LED illuminated. Also to the operator's right is a large-sized cup holder. Farther back is a large-sized heated and cooled insulated storage compartment. Above on the right rear post is a red hammer that can be used to break out glass for an emergency exit and can be also used to cut the seat belt in an emergency. Also in this area is a coat hook and garment retainer. A rear view camera monitor is located at the top right corner of the cab if equipped. It is operational when the ignition is powered and shows a real time view of what is behind the truck. Brightness and contrast controls are adjusted by using the buttons at the bottom of the screen. A sunshade is located to the front. A dome light is provided in the headliner that can be manually turned on and off. This concludes the control section of this video. Be sure to review the operator's manual before operating.